Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. Today is Saturday, June the 4th, 2022, and today I'm here at the Alora Gorge Conservation Area, and welcome to day one of my Grand River solo canoeing adventure. The Grand River is a large river in Ontario, Canada, which passes through several small cities and towns before eventually emptying into Lake Erie. Having admired this scenic river many times while crossing it on past bicycle tours, I've decided to spend the next eight days canoeing a 215 kilometer section of it. So this morning I'm beginning just downstream of the Alora Gorge with the goal of paddling all the way to the Grand River's mouth at Port Maitland before the end of my vacation. So the time is now 10.30 and I've got the canoe fully loaded and now I'm ready to get in it and begin paddling down that way, down the Grand River. I'm anticipating that I'll encounter several shallow rocky sections during this trip which my family's blue water Kevlar canoe that I've used on previous trips isn't suited for. For this adventure I'm using an Old Town Roilex canoe that's designed for this type of paddling which I've rented from Element Canoes in Hamilton. So after that very short section of small rapids, things are quite calm here for the next little bit I believe. I'm seeing lots of people out fishing today. So up ahead here is the first of many forks in the river that I'll be encountering on this trip because of islands that exist along the way. And I think I'll take the option over here to the right. Well, aside from those guys fishing, I seem to have this whole river to myself, which is really nice. Scenery has been really nice so far. And of course the weather today is absolutely perfect. Blue sky, not a cloud in the sky, and temperatures are also quite comfortable. And the current throughout this section seems to be fairly steady, which is nice because it's helping to pull me towards my destination. Over there on that rock, I can see my first turtle of this trip. Up ahead, there's another small section of rapids to paddle through. So the time is now 11 o'clock and I paddled about 2.8 kilometers so far and the canoe is currently stuck here on some rocks, which is something that's happened a fair bit today. I've probably gotten out about five times to just sort of walk with the canoe over the shallow section. So I'll do that again here, but then I'll be able to keep on paddling further downstream. Just passing someone's home that's situated here along the river. That's the first of those that I've seen on this trip so far. And I'm just paddling past a mother and father Canada goose with their young. So there's been a fair bit of rocks along the last little section where I've had to walk, but it looks like I've got some nice deep water up ahead for the next stretch here. So up ahead, peeking through the trees, I can see the first bridge that I'll be paddling underneath of on this trip. So this is the eighth line bridge. And I actually rode my bike across this bridge on day nine of my Ontario bike tour from July of 2018. After dropping me off at my start point this morning, my dad drove to this bridge and it's him who's filming me here as I'm paddling past. Within these first five kilometers of paddling, I had determined that neither of the two paddles I had brought were the right size for me, but I was lucky that my dad had a spare paddle in the van that was a much better fit, which I could swap for. So the scenery continues to be really nice and I've also really been appreciating how clean the river seems to be. Uh, the water is very clear and I've noticed very little amounts of garbage. I haven't seen any tires or any other discarded items in here, which is nice. So the wind is actually quite strong today. Even though I'm down in the middle of a valley, I can still feel it and right now I'm paddling against it, but it's not a huge factor and I do also still have the current helping me. Up ahead around the corner, I can see the Middlebrook Place Road Bridge coming into view, which is also known as the Chambers Bridge. This bridge was installed here back in the 1930s, but over the years it fell into disrepair, and in 2013 it was closed to motor vehicle traffic, uh, but remained uh, open for pedestrians and bikes, uh, but they actually closed the bridge entirely last year in 2021. In the middle of the bridge, you can see there's this concrete column that actually doesn't do anything, and that's presumably because that concrete dates back to whatever the predecessor of this bridge was. So the bridge has been slated for demolition, but there's a group of locals who are advocating for the bridge to be saved. So the time is now 12.30, and I've paddled just a little bit less than nine kilometers so far. And when I crossed that bridge back there, I also passed a municipal boundary. Uh, I started the trip in uh, center Wellington within the county of Wellington, and I've now entered Waterloo Region, and I'm within the township of Woolwich. So even though I've had to do a fair bit of walking today with the canoe, I checked my average speed and it seems to be pretty well in line with what I'm used to for flat water. So I guess the current from the river kind of balances out these sections where I have to walk. Over here I can see some Canada geese with some small little goslings there. 
So up in that tree there, I can see a bird perched, which has a black body and a white head. And I'm pretty sure that's a bald eagle, which the Grand River is known for. Up ahead in the distance, I can see a big concrete column in the middle of the river. And that's part of the remains of an old railway bridge. So the railway which used to cross the river here was called the Guelph and Goderich Railway, or the GNGR. And it first opened in 1907, and it was abandoned in 1988. If you've ever heard of the G2G Trail, uh, which connects together the cities of Guelph and Goderich, that trail follows the path of that same railway, but obviously it doesn't include the former historic bridge here because it was demolished long before the trail was established. So the time is now about 1.40 p.m. and I paddled about 14 kilometers so far and I'm starting to get pretty hungry so I think I'll pull over in that shade over there underneath that tree and stop and make myself some lunch. So on the menu for my lunch I'm going to eat this cucumber and then I'll make myself a peanut butter sandwich and if I still have room I'll also have an apple. So the time is now 2.10 p.m. and I finished my lunch and I'm ready to get back on the water and keep on paddling and I don't have very much further to go. So this bridge here is for a road called Line 86 in Waterloo Region and my campground should be just beyond it on the right hand side. So I'm past the bridge now and here's my first look at my accommodation for the night which is called the West Montrose Family Camp. Alright so I pulled the canoe up onto the land here and I believe Somewhere on this grass is where I'll be camping tonight, but I'm just going to walk over to the park office and pay for my permit for the night. So I managed to find my way over to the park office, and I've now purchased my camping permit for the night. So I'll now head back to the water, and I can get the canoe unloaded and start setting up my campsite. Alright, so I found my way back to where I parked the canoe. Now to get everything unloaded and moved up to here, because this is where I'm going to be setting up my tent for the night. Just across the river here, I can see somebody riding in a horse and buggy, presumably some plain dressed Mennonites that live in the area. We are very much within Mennonite country right now. So the time is now 3.15 and I've got the canoe pulled out of the water and my tent set up here. And I think I'm now just gonna lay down and relax a little bit inside the tent because I did have a fairly early morning this morning and it'll also be nice to escape some of this heavy wind that I have here in this grassy campsite. So the time is now 4.15 and I've decided to go for a bit of a walk. Over there in the distance you can see a structure which spans across the river up there and that is the West Montrose Covered Bridge which is situated within the community of West Montrose. So my plan is to walk over that way. Now unfortunately there's a section of land back there between here and the bridge which is privately owned and there are no trespassing signs. So my walk to West Montrose will take me along a short section of Line 86. So here's the sign welcoming me to West Montrose and next to it you can see a farmer's field. So as I make my way into town here I'm just passing the West Montrose United Church which dates back to 1907. So here I've reached the center of this small community. And as far as I know West Montrose doesn't have any restaurants but it does have this small variety store. Notice that this house here in its garage has some buggies that will get pulled behind horses and just beyond here is where the beginning of the bridges. So the West Montrose Covered Bridge first opened in 1881, making it one of the oldest covered bridges in all of Canada. The bridge was originally constructed almost entirely from wood, and the man who was responsible for building it didn't really have a long history in building bridges, but he was known for building barns. At some point over the years, this bridge earned itself a nickname because this bridge is also known as the Kissing Bridge. Of course, an obvious question might be, what's the point in having a covered bridge? Why does the bridge need to have a roof? And they were really common at the time. And from what I understand, it sort of had to do with winter maintenance. If they had a roof, then it meant they don't have to worry about ice or snow on the bridge. However, I also read that it didn't actually end up being that helpful because a lot of the people in this area in the winter, rather than taking out their horse and buggies, they would use sleighs. And when they would get to the bridge, they need to have snow to be able to get across, so they would actually have to shovel snow on here so they'd be able to get their sleighs across. So the bridge has a historic plaque, and the reason that it gives for the roof being required is to protect the wood in the floor from the elements to make it last longer. So this is actually my second time visiting the West Montrose Covered Bridge. The first time was back in June of 2009 when I was going to the University of Waterloo and I came on a bike ride here with my dad one Sunday. So I just stopped in at the variety store to pick up a couple of snack items for later. And now I'm going to walk back to the campsite. 
So over that way is where my campsite is, and the covered bridge is over here behind these trees. And like I described earlier, it's not possible to walk directly there because that land that's straight ahead there is privately owned. So what I've done instead, because I don't want to take the long route that I took to get here by going on the highway, I'm just walking on this road that follows the other side of the river. And my idea is that because I spent a day trying to canoe through a river that was really shallow, I should be able to just take my shoes off and walk straight across. So here I am halfway across and doing this barefoot, I am appreciative of my water shoes, which I was using earlier today. So here I am back on dry land and ready to have some dinner. So the main course of my meal is this can of stag chili, which I brought with me on the trip. And I'm also gonna snack on a couple of other things, including the things that I bought from the variety store. Uh, first being this ripe banana. Uh, and I also bought these baked goods. Uh, these are called chocolate whoopie pies. This is a delicacy that I enjoyed on one of my previous trips. So I'm looking forward to trying some more of that. And I also got some interesting looking ginger snap cookies. Obviously I'm not gonna eat all of this tonight. These are to be enjoyed across multiple days, but it's always nice to get to enjoy some food that was prepared locally to where you're staying. And because I didn't bring any cooking equipment with me on this trip, I'm going to be enjoying this chili cold today, but it is spicy chili, so without heating it up, it's already hot. Over there I can see some other paddlers coming down the river. A kayaker followed by two canoes. And by the way, these ginger snap cookies are really good. So I finished my dinner, and I'm now getting ready to make my breakfast for tomorrow, which is which is something that I call campsite overnight oats. Ahead of time, I prepared these bags of dry ingredients. And after that, all I need to do is add some clean drinking water. So the time is now about 7.45, and I figure this is probably a good place to sign off for day one of this trip, which is a really enjoyable uh, day of paddling out on the water. Uh, my total distance today was about 14.5 kilometers. And of course, the weather was beautiful. Uh, it was fairly windy, but the wind has now dropped. Um, 14.5 is not a particularly long distance, uh, and I will be paddling a fair bit longer tomorrow, but I always think it's a good idea to have a, a shorter distance on your uh, first day of the trip, just to sort of get, you know, get into the swing of things, and also to account for the fact that you had to travel to your start point, which occupied a, a fair bit of time. But tomorrow, I'm, you know, I'm right here on the water, I should be able to get a nice start uh, for my distance tomorrow, which should be around uh, 26 kilometers or so. And uh, the scenery tomorrow should be fairly different than what I saw today, which was today's scenery was almost, you know, entirely uh, very undisturbed natural uh, landscapes where tomorrow I'll be paddling into the city of Kitchener, uh, which will obviously be more developed. And I'll actually be camping in a campground that's actually located within the Kitchener city limits. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, definitely a different type of paddling uh, that I've been experiencing so far on this trip from what I'm used to. Uh, prior to this trip, almost exclusively all the canoeing that I've done uh, had been flat water paddling. So paddling through a shallow river where you have to get out of the canoe, you know, a fair bit uh, because it's too shallow is definitely an adjustment for me. Um, but uh, enjoying it still, uh, I would say I probably got out of the canoe around 30 times today at least. Um, so yeah, definitely different. Um, but uh, like I was saying earlier in the video, I was finding that my average speed seemed to be fairly, you know, consistent with what I've done uh, for flat water. So likely the uh, the current that's helping me for the sections where I actually can paddle is kind of boosting that average. And then obviously the walking sections are, are you know, sort of slowing it back down again. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed joining me for day one of this trip. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.